Assalamu alaikum and hello everyone. Today we are going to talk about Web 2.0 tools. The topic that I'm going to talk about is uh, about Web 2.0. I'm going to discuss about the uh, Padlet. I'm going to discuss about Prezi, Poll Everywhere, Blank Space and Edmodo for today's lesson. What is Padlet? Padlet is a virtual wall that allows people to express their thoughts on a common topic easily. It works like an online sheet on paper where people can put any content, images, videos, documents, text anywhere on the page together with anyone from any device. So I use Padlet for let's say introduction of the course. Okay? So I would like to ask the uh, uh, students or audience, can you introduce yourself? So everyone log into Padlet. So you have to sign in into Padlet first and then everyone will come into the same wall. It's a virtual wall. So how do you want to create a Padlet wall? So the first one is the step. The first step that I'm going to say to you, you have to create an account. So you go to www.padlet.com and you sign up. Okay. So you can sign up using your uh, Google account or your Facebook account. Okay. Then the step two will be creating a wall. So once you already create uh, sign up, you will straight go into the wall. So you get started, uh, you have to click and build a wall. So you click on build a wall. Then you click modify wall button to begin customizing your wall. So you start off with build a wall. So click on each tiles on the right side of the screen to customize your wall. So in your wall, you have profile. You have wallpaper, you have layout, privacy, notifications, and address at the side, uh, the icon there. So what does profile do? Profile means customize the image associated with the wall, the title of the wall, and the wall description. Teachers use the title description fields to post a question or share the assignment directions. So for this, you would write the title of the wall. Let's say if I teach this course QMT323E, so I write QMT323E. And then the wallpaper, you set the background of the wallpaper. So it's up to you to design what type of background that you like. Okay? Always choose a bright background. The layout, choose how the posts appear on your wall. So it can be free form or it can be stream. So free form will be Posts can be placed anywhere. Okay, so free form means uh, you can put anywhere on the wall. It's free. And stream means posts are placed one below the other. That means you are placed one after another. For privacy, choose how public you want your wall to be. Okay, so it can be uh, open to everyone or it just to yourself or to a friend only. So hidden link is the best option when using Padlet with students. Notifications, choose if you want to be emailed each time someone added a post to you. Okay? So it will notify you and address is allow you to create a custom URL for your own wall. So it will be advisable that you create your own address so that you can remember easier. Now I show you how you want to add posts to the wall. So you create, when, once you create uh, your wall, you sign in. Let's say you name your wall as Mrs. Treacher. So now you create, okay, click anywhere to add posts to the wall. And then you can start adding your name or title. Okay, and then you can add your text to the response or whatever that you want to add the text. And also you can add tools to edit, delete your post. So if you don't want to uh, have your post remain permanent, you can delete away. The step four, now you want to share, after you have written the post, now you want to share with others. Okay, So click on the button to view, to share and export option. Okay? Share, you can share your wall with others uh, via social media. And export, you can export the content of your wall okay, via PDF file, Excel file, or CSV file. So, uh, or you can mobilize, invite others to collaborate by sharing the URL or the QR code. Okay, so you can share, export, uh, subscribe, or also you can send email. You can also print 
and you can also mobilize that mean you can share the URL the QR code so now I'd like to show you all the Padlet tutorial just watch the YouTube now this is a quick demonstration of how to use Padlet Padlet allows you to quickly create interactive web pages Students can access the page from their desktops, laptops, tablets, and smartphones. Students can add elements to the page, text, pictures, and videos. Like all Web2 and mobile tools that I review, Padlet is free, easy to use, and accessible on multiple platforms. Let's get started. Just type padlet.com into your favorite browser. If you want to create an account, you can. However, you can also create pages without an account. Just click Build a Wall. Then click Modify Wall. We'll start with a title and brief description. My sample topic is Impacts of Global Warming on Polar Bear Habitats. Then we'll choose a wallpaper. Just go over here and click on wallpaper. You can either choose an existing wallpaper or you can upload an, any image and create your own background. I'll just quickly show you some of the existing backgrounds. For my purposes, I'm going to choose sky. The next step is to modify your privacy settings. You can make a private wall that only you and people you add by email can see. You can make a password protected wall. You can make a wall that's not password protected but is hidden. And you can change what people can do on the wall. You can have a wall that's totally public. Anyone can access it and change it. And you can also choose to moderate posts. I'm just gonna leave it on the default hidden link. The next thing you'll wanna do is choose an address. Notice that Padlet creates an address for you. It's essentially a random string of numbers and letters. I'm going to change it to something more memorable. Now you can start adding elements. Just double click anywhere to create an element. Text is easy. Just double click and start typing. For pictures, just double click and you can quickly upload by pressing this center arrow button. I'm going to choose a nice public domain picture. And there it is. We can move it around and we can resize it. We can also give it a title. I'm just going to leave it over here for now. And we can create a video link. I'm going to use YouTube for this. And press the link button here. And then I'm going to get the URL of a YouTube page, copy, paste it in, and there's my YouTube video. I'll just resize it a little bit, and I could again put a title up there. And I'll give some questions for my students. Now, my students will be able to visit the web page, double click, and post their responses. They'll also be able to upload pictures and video if you want them to be able to do that. If you decide that there's an element that you don't like, just click it once and go to this little trash can, click that, OK Remove, and it's gone. The best way to get to know this web tool is to practice it by yourself. I guarantee you, if you give it 15 minutes, you'll understand it very well. This is an example of my students' work. That's, uh, let's say QMT323E, Web-Based Design and Development. This is uh, my students' uh, 
uh, work, they have come in to the same wall and this is what they have uh, presented and they introduce themselves. Okay? So let's see, this is an example of a virtual wall. The next tool that I'm going to tell you all is Prezi. Okay? So what is Prezi? Prezi is a presentation tool that can be used as an alternative to traditional slide, making programs such as PowerPoint instead of slides. Okay? Prezi makes use of one large canvas that allows you to pan and zoom to various parts of the canvas and emphasize the ideas presented there. Let's watch the YouTube for Prezi presentation. Prezi.com has recently undergone a redesign and in fact the whole process of creating your Prezi's is now different and so I wanted to do a new tutorial to show off some of these new features and also the new layout and so forth. So here I am at Prezi.com. I'm going to click on your Prezi's and of course it takes me to my home page where it lists my Prezi's I've made. I'll just go ahead and click new Prezi. You can pick a template. They now have lots and lots of templates. Some of them support a 3D effect. That's kind of fun. But I'm just going to pick the blank template for now. I'll click choose and it gets me in. You'll notice that the new layout of the Prezi uh, system um, it has these menus across the top and then it, it does still have the edit path here on the side which will show what each zoom will look like. It's a little preview of each zoom. Alright, we start out with a frame here in the center and you can click on it uh, on the text box at, in the middle of the frame to add a title. And of course you can click on the background at any point to add more text. After adding text you just click outside the box and it records the um, changes on the screen. You can also add images <coughs> into your Prezi's and um, they've changed the, the way of doing this. It used to be that there was a different system in, in the upper left corner there was a bubble menu and so forth. They've gone to a more standard layout here. Um, you, we can just go up here to the top and click insert and there's a bunch of different things you can insert. I'll click images. You can search Google Images from within Prezi and it brings up a bunch of results that you can cycle through using either the, the scroll wheel on the mouse like this or you can use the up and down arrows on the keyboard. When you find a picture you would like to use in your Prezi simply hit enter or you can click this insert button. It takes a few seconds to import the, the image into your Prezi but then you can move it. You, if you click on it uh, a second time you can resize and you can even crop the image right from within Prezi. In addition, if you, uh, if you want to, you can put your mouse in the upper right corner of the image and you get a little circle there which you can use to rotate the image. That's also the case with text. If you click on text, you get the handles, the square handles in the corners. But if you put your mouse in the upper right, handle in the corner, you get a circular handle that you can use to rotate. Now that we have a title for our Prezi, all we need to do is start adding more content onto the screen. And the easiest way to do that is to add a new frame. And these frames are what help you to highlight the different uh, content information, the different uh, pieces of information that you'd like to share with your students. So I'm going to go up to the frames and arrows menu and click, you can click add frame and then choose the kind of frame or you can just choose right from this menu the frame that you'd like to use. I'm going to use the rectangle frame, draw it on the screen. Now to add text, sometimes it's hard to add text on a frame like this so you can just click outside the frame to add your text and then you can click and drag and put it where you want it to be in the frame. Okay so now the next step now that I have uh, a new frame with a title I've got some content I could put in some text videos whatever uh, but I put in some some pictures here. Uh, so now the next step would be to link these two together. Now of course I could continue 
adding content to my Prezi. I could add information about verbs and pronouns and adjectives or whatever. But in the interest of making this a short tutorial, let's pretend like I've already done that and there's lots of different uh, information on the screen. The way you link these together in the order in which you would like to show your Prezi is you just go here <coughs> to the left side of the screen where it says Edit Path and you click and now you'll you'll see that the items on the screen are numbered so my uh, title frame is numbered I would like the nouns frame to to be the second thing that the viewer sees so I just click on the frame now you have to be careful here if you click on content inside the frame for example this picture of George Washington or this map then it will zoom directly in to that item if I were to click on the word nouns it would zoom right up uh, to the word nouns and so you have to be careful with this I'm just gonna click on the frame itself and you'll see here on the left where, it's, where it lists my different views that, that form my path you'll see that it, it's gonna zoom in and show the entire frame. Okay. Now if I had created a, a section for verbs and adverbs and adjectives I would then go on and click each of those frames. When you're done you click done and it gets you out of the edit path mode and you'll see that it's set up now to to run correctly. If I go in the upper left corner and click present and allow this is what my my Prezi would look like. If I use the arrow keys, the left and right arrow keys on the computer, I can advance and it, it follows the order that I established. I'm going to hit the escape key to close out of my presentation because I wanted to, to highlight for you a few of the other cool options, especially some of the newer ones in Prezi. When you are editing your path, notice that in addition to establishing the order of the path, it also gives you this symbol. It looks like a star moving. Uh, that stands for animate frame content. So if I click that, it lets me apply effects, fade in effects, to each of these items. So I can animate these pictures and have them come in one at a time. You can preview the, the results by clicking this button and then click done and done. So that's a nice new fairly new feature in Prezi that you can animate things and have them come in one at a time rather than just all be on the screen once it's zoomed in also here on the left side you can reorder your path very easily just by dragging and dropping um, if you do decide you would like to get rid of one of these views it doesn't erase the content but it does it eliminates the zoom there's a couple of ways you can do that you could click edit path and just drag the number away from the object and it will disappear. The other way is just to go here to the edit path window, put your mouse over a particular view and click the X and it will go away. Okay, so hopefully that's enough about about frames and you can see there's four different kinds of frames. I really like the invisible frames but but they're all useful. You can also draw arrows from this menu very easily and lines and also there is a highlighter highlighter pen that you can use let's move over to the insert menu I already showed you you can insert images there's also a symbols library that you can use and a few diagrams that you can choose from and and utilize similar to what you see in modern versions of PowerPoint here's the symbols library and what what it looks like and this is a fairly new addition to Prezi as well. If you want to put in a YouTube video, you simply just click that and then paste in the YouTube link. So as an example. Hi, I'm John Green. This is Crash Course US History and today we're going to discuss the event. So here's the YouTube video I'd like to use in my Prezi. All I have to do is copy this address. I clicked on it. Control C to copy. And then back in my Prezi, I can Control V to paste it in there. Click insert and now I've got a, a YouTube video that will play as part of my presentation. Now it's a good idea to add that to the path otherwise it, you won't notice the video is even there probably. And then another new feature in Prezi that I really appreciate is that you can add background music to your presentation. So I'll click add background music and I can select uh, a music file that's on my computer 
it uploads the song into Prezi and you can get a preview of that and then click done. So now when I click present the music will start right away and I can begin my presentation. And then also you can import a PowerPoint just by clicking import PowerPoint you can then select your, your PowerPoint presentation it imports it off to the right here and then each slide is presented for you on the right and you can easily drag and drop those PowerPoint slides into your Prezi. This final menu is simply a new way to access the template options. Remember at the beginning I chose to have no template, but if I change my mind I can click template, change template, and it'll change. But also in this same menu I can choose a theme for my uh, Prezi. This would change the color schemes, the fonts, the thickness of the lines, all of these things would change just with a click of a button. So I'll, I'll show you that. I'll just click midnight and you'll see that now um, the fonts have changed, the colors have changed. Um, my presentation has been transformed. <laughs> right there you've seen the majority of the changes in, in Prezi. I think it, this is a big step forward. It's going to make Prezi even more fun and efficient. So I'll click exit. Here's my Prezi. I'll turn off the music there. Notice that I can click this button to download a copy to my computer so in, in case I need to present without uh, access to the internet and then there are share options here as well where I can I can invite someone to view the presentation by sharing this URL with them or clicking email and putting in their email address you can also invite people to help you edit the presentation and then if you want to embed your Prezi you can just click here where it says embed choose some options and then copy this code to the clipboard and then you'll be able to paste it into the web page that you're building and it should embed right in. So hopefully that gets you caught up on the, the changes in Prezi. I hope you have fun with it. Here are some examples that I've made from Prezi. So it will be captured into screen by screen and look at all the Prezi and you can share okay, the uh, Prezi with everyone, anybody that you want to link up. Okay. So these are the, the examples of Prezi being done. The next Web 2.0 tools is uh, what is uh, Poll Everywhere. Okay, I'm going to talk about Poll Everywhere. How you want to get into Poll Everywhere is uh, www.polleverywhere.com. It is a web-based system that can use both in and outside of the classroom to create multiple choice or open answer polls. Okay. So no special software or equipment is required. So it is a web-based uh, program. Okay. Students can submit responses via text message or using a browser on their laptop or another internet uh, connected device. Okay. So they can use uh, either their tablet or they can use their uh, computer or laptop. Okay. So instructors uh, use a simple web form to create either multiple choice or open text question. Polls can be Im embedded in PowerPoint or keynote presentation, displayed in a web browser or embedded in a course uh, website. So this poll everywhere is very useful for polling. Let's say you want a vote of some answers that you want to get uh, direct synchronous uh, action. So this is a very good uh, program to use Poll Everywhere. How it works? Step 1. You ask a question. Use our Easy Poll Creator to ask your most burning question. So type your question into our Poll Creator. Select the kind of poll you want to make and press Create. That's it. Okay. Your poll is ready to share with the participants. Okay. Uh, though, of course, you can always uh, go in and really make them in your own colors, fonts, graphics, so you can change. Okay? All the polls you create will appear on my polls page as long as you care to keep them uh, there, as long as uh, you have the account with us. Okay? So it can be multiple choice poll or it can be free response poll. So the poll everywhere can use for also true or false polling. Let's say you want to ask a question whether uh, the question is true or false. So you want to get the feedback from the students. So that you, they log in into uh, poll everywhere and you can see the real time okay, answers you get straight from the 
uh, audience or the students. Uh, another poll everywhere can be used also at clickable image polls. So you can uh, which of these uh, heroes has the best costume. So you can click on certain image okay, and you can choose. Another extra thing for poll everywhere that is a discourse poll which uh, let's say you can uh, ask them whether which one that they would like to choose okay which sidekick biography should we read today so they can choose any one that they want to read okay so a few extra so you can create the perfect poll uh, get creative with your questions we know that there are huge varieties of questions on your mind which is why we support a bunch of different ways of asking them okay so it can be questions it can be images it can be formulas or it can be also foreign language or anything that you feel like you want to ask it can be also uh, mathematical questions okay they have some formulas there so you can use poll everywhere so in poll everywhere you can use in your mobile phone also you can do web voting so it works from any web browser the easiest uh, most elegant way uh, to vote is through your beautiful web interface anyone who has a web browser can participate you can control which poll your audience sees by pushing uh, it to the individual devices. They visit your poll everywhere voting page at polleverywhere.com and backslash your name and the poll appears and then they will click uh, vote. Okay. So customizing the uh, voting experience. So you the ultimate in the uh, look and the feel of the uh, poll everywhere. You can craft a vote experience that exactly reflect your brand of your preferences from colors, fonts and graphics to layout, spacing and message. Okay? This is a good uh, special add-on not available on standard uh, plans. So you can do uh, voting from using Poll Everywhere. Poll Everywhere is also real time and you can get a uh, live result. So and now for the real magic that you can get, let's say, uh, you create uh, when you created a poll, your audience uh, voted, and now the moment of excitement when you see the live results uh, flash on the wall. Okay, there is nothing like a chart or bouncing bars or live updating words cloud to uh, fire up the crowd. Okay, so and don't forget you can customize the looks and the feels of your charts to match your own style. So from a web browser, if you use from a web browser, enable the full screen uh, mode to a beautiful display so that everyone can watch it. So the quickest and the easiest uh, way to display your result is directly from our website. And once uh, you are enabled into a full screen mode, your browser and all the browser buttons are hidden. So the only thing your audience sees is the responses. Uh, in all their glory so you can magnify the screen to suit the screen size of your computer and you can see the polling results and the flashing results there okay if you use a uh, powerpoint or keynote let's say you use a uh, powerpoint for the uh, pc and keynote for the mac okay it's also a presentation uh, file you can present your polls as a seamless part of your powerpoint or keynote slideshow okay so flip on through and instead of another flat picture, your audience sees your slide come alive and uh, the time poll results. So you just need to download our Poll Everywhere presenter apps. So if you use the Poll Everywhere on your Mac. okay. So on your web page, uh, you can also embed the Poll Everywhere onto your blogs. okay. So this is a very handful um, tool that can be embedded into your Facebook, into your Twitter or with any other place where people can follow a link. So here is an example of an instance audience feedback. Uh, so you can create your own uh, poll everywhere. So let's watch the YouTube. With this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to use PollEverywhere.com. PollEverywhere.com allows you to create your own account through the sign up feature where it keeps track of all the polls that you make. You just log in each time you visit the site. Another option is you can create a poll without ever signing up. This would be for like one-time use. Whenever you create your first poll, type in the question you want to use. 
And then you can choose if you want your audience to respond with their own answer or from multiple choice. Whenever it's multiple choice, you can give choices. Or you can insert pictures. To insert a picture you already have on file, choose the camera and then tell it where the picture is. It will insert the picture for you. If you want to use a picture that's already online, find the picture you want to use, right click on the picture, choose copy image URL, and insert that link. That will put the image in for you. Now you have a poll. You can choose to add more answers. You can delete them from the side if you don't need them. And when you're ready, you can choose Create. Once the poll is created, your audience will have the opportunity to respond to the poll. Notice that it says text a code and it gives a number. That's the telephone number that the audience will use. They will text their code to that telephone number, 22333. The code that they're going to use is the code of the picture that they believe is the person who invented flight. As an example, I will send in a quick text message while looking at the poll. The telephone number is 22333. This will change depending on when you make your poll. I'm going to choose option 2 just for fun. 8005936. Hit send. And responses show up automatically. This is one of the things students like the most. When you have another class getting ready to come in, you can choose clear results. And this way the new class that comes in can have their own voting. You are limited to 40 responses in the free version. You can change the settings of your poll to make it look a little different as far as color and background. And if you want to make another poll, just choose create poll. And this time let's make an open-ended question. Leave it open-ended so the audience responds with their own answer. And it creates your poll for you. It's a little different when it's an open-ended question. You're still going to text to the same telephone number, 22333. But in order for your audience to give their response, they must use the number 805953 first putting a space after it, and then they can type whatever they want to. So going back to my text message, I'm sending it to 22333. The very first thing I do is put in the number 805953, a space, and then I type my response. I hit send, and as responses come in, they show up on the screen. There is no way to track what telephone number it comes from in the free version. I encourage my students to put their name on their answer or they will not receive credit. Students can also respond besides texting through a computer. If you'd like to turn that option off, it's under your How People Can Respond option. And there it changes. Again, you can change the settings. You can make it full screen, and you can navigate between the polls that you have made by choosing previous poll or next poll. Remember, in the free version, your polls are not kept unless you choose to sign up and create your own account. That is how you use PollEverywhere.com. If you need more additional help, please ask. The next uh, tools that I'm going to discuss with you is blank space. What is a blank space? 
Blank Space is a tool that can be used. Okay, it's an online multimedia web tool for teachers and students to create presentation, webcasts, projects, online course, and more. So this is one of the tools that you can use for a flipped classroom. Okay, so flip your classroom, collect and share resources. You can integrate it with uh, Edmodo, which I'm going to explain to you later. What is Edmodo? And pull resources from your YouTube, Dropbox, Google Drive, Flickr, website links, my computer, bookmarks, and many more. Okay. So a year ago, teacher logged into the Ad Canvas and started blending materials together from all over the web into a beautiful lesson. And a year later, the Ad Canvas has gone into blank space. So it is like a canvas. It is like a space. Okay. And from where it's uh, providing a space where you can put your digital content into a, uh, to suit the tools, okay, and you can uh, let the students read the material and track their progress. You can see the uh, you can interact with the uh, students. Okay, you can see the input, and uh, you can uh, do a peer interaction using this blank space. So how it works? How it works in a blank space? Anyone who signs up for a subscription account can create a canvas and pull it in other materials from videos to URLs to plain old text. Okay, they can annotate the pieces. They can share their collection with either students or teachers. Anyone that can see the sample of canvases on the blank space homepage will register. The okay uh, users can will register. So registered to uh, users can see collection of canvas created by others and organized according to the disciplines. Okay, so teachers can register their students by inviting them into the blank space via email. So you will have a code, okay, course code that you can uh, come in when if you have the course code and then you can come in together into the. Uh, canvas or the blank space. So the company has seen teachers use blank space in four ways. Let's say uh, the company that created the blank space, it can use for presentation. That is, uh, add online multimedia like YouTube videos, document and website simply by drag, drag and dropping. It can use as uh, flipping the class, create self-paced lesson, and share with just one link. Okay, so you can use as a uh, flipped classroom. And it and can also be used as project-based learning. Students can research, learn, and showcase their project. Okay. And also it can be used as differentiated uh, instruction. That is uh, personalized student learning with different online material. So students can use this blank space into four uh, different ways. Okay. Now let's watch the YouTube from this blank space tutorial. I'm so excited to show you an amazing tool called BlendSpace. And BlendSpace is so wonderful for a multitude of reasons. It is free. It's free for students. It's also free for teachers. Um, it is very simple to use. They have tons of teacher resources up here at the top for you to get assistance and lesson ideas. But it's also so easy and so quick to use. This homepage says create lessons in five minutes. And honestly, I think five minutes would be the maximum you would need. I'm going to show you how quick and simple it is. The first thing that you're going to do is we're going to come up here and we're going to log in. Once you've logged in, it's going to take you to your dashboard. This is going to show you all the lessons here that you've created. It's also going to show you featured lessons down here at the bottom. Um, over to the left, you can also see your lessons tab. You can view classes. Um, you can also go to your gallery and search for lessons that other teachers have created. They've made it so easy for you. They've separated it here within content areas. Or you can come up here and search lessons uh, within a more specific content word. So in order to explain to you what blend space is, it's much easier if I do it showing a featured lesson. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to go into this photosynthesis featured lesson and you're going to see it puts the title up here at the top. What blend space does is it compiles a lot of electronic and media resources together within one lesson. There's a lot of different ways your students can access the information. 
you'll see that each resource has a logo so it's going to indicate whether it's a video an image a document you'll see a chain link logo in a minute for websites as well so students can click on the resource they can come down here and play this youtube video it's also amazing you'll see the comments over here on the right so students can post questions or comment on insightful information that they noticed during the video they can also like it as they like it or not a fan and then they can exit out of it and they can go to a different resource that's not necessarily the next one in order so that's the first way they can access information the second way if you want them to go through your resources one by one in chronological order then what you'll do you'll see this arrow over here to the right when students are done viewing that video they'll click the arrow and they can navigate forward and backwards throughout all of these resources so that's what blend space does I can see this used in a multitude of ways I can see it being used as compiling a lesson for your students to go through step by step I can also see it as being a great way to host a lot of tutorial videos on a particular topic and putting that on your website so if students need to find tutorials on solving linear equations then you could have a blend space lesson on linear equation tutorials students can click on that link on your website and it can bring them here to all the different video tutorials that you've compiled for that another neat way I think it could be used is if you're going to be presenting a lesson to your class and you're going to be using a multitude of resources for that lesson this is a great way to put those all in one place so you're not having to go into YouTube and find in this video then exiting out of YouTube and pulling up this image then exiting out of the image and going and finding this PDF document to show and um, that doing it that way loses a lot of instructional time so if you use a service like blend space and you put all the resources together it's going to make your transitions from instructional resource one to the next very seamless and you're going to save a lot of instructional time that way i'm going to show you how easy it is to create one of these i'm going to go back to my home button and i'm going to click on new lesson it's going to ask me what my canvas is about I'm going to put the Civil War and from here it's going to give you your different boxes I can drop a resource down I can add text or I can add a quiz so I'm going to add text this is I'm going to make this text really big because I'm just using this text box at this moment um, as a title box in a sense you could have made it smaller to where students could click on it and they could read all the information there together now the next way you can do you can come over here to the right and there's a resources paint where you can search for a lot of different resources and you'll see that it has the little logo over here to the right as well the first one is YouTube so I'm going to search for Civil War within YouTube if you don't necessarily know the video you're looking for you can click on the preview and watch the video to make sure it is appropriate for the lesson that you're going to be demonstrating that day Okay, we're going to say we like that video so if we like it we're just going to grab it and drag it over you can also do google images as well same thing you can preview if that's the one that you want then you can drag it over it's also going to let you do open ed searches Flickr images edu creations guru you can put in your own website and i'll tell you what i love about that I'm going to pull this Wikipedia page real quick. I'm going to copy the URL. I'm going to come back over to Blend Space and I'm going to paste my URL in this website box. What it does is it's going to search that website. It's going to give you the web link here, but you'll also see it's going to list all the different images down here at the bottom as well. So if you wanted to use one of these as an image, you could. And then if you wanted to drag over the actual website link, you could do that as well. You can upload files that you have onto your computer, but they've even taken it a step further and made it so easy. If you use Dropbox or Google Drive, you can add your accounts to those, and if your files are in those accounts, you can add them over there just as easy. It also has a really neat bookmarklet tool here as well um, to make it even easier for you adding websites on here. 
You're not only limited to these six rows here or the six boxes it shows. If you would like more rows, you just click on more rows at the bottom. You can do as many as you want. Now, it auto saves for you, which is phenomenal. Every step that I've done, it saved it for me. So if my website crashes, I can pull it back up and I haven't lost anything. You can change your templates, themes. You can play it from the beginning. You can also print it, which would be really handy if you have a lot of resources that are text-based or image-based. If you have a student absent, you can go ahead and print it out and give that, give that to them. When you're ready to share this and have students access it, you're going to click on the share link up here at the top. It's going to give you the lesson link here. It also gives you a lot of different ways to share down here at the bottom as well. You can change the privacy of your lesson to where you can change who gets to view it um, or who can copy resources from your lesson. And if you want to upgrade from the free account and pay a little bit of money, um, you can also have the option to be able to collaborate with other people on your lessons. So I'm going to show you the last thing that's so wonderful about Blend Space. I'm going to sign out of this because I want to show you I copied that website link from the share button before. I want to show you that your students can access this without having to log in. So I'm going to go to my Blend Space. This is what I have created. Students can still access the content just like they did before. The only thing, if you didn't notice, right over here to the right, you saw the comments down there before. If students are not signed in, they cannot view or add comments without signing in. So that's the only thing um, that they'll need to be able to sign in for. And other than that, that is Blend Space. Very, very simple to use, great tool to use with your students. It's going to save you a ton of time. Here's an example of the uh, blank space that I've done with my students. And uh, this is like QMT323E. So this is the examples of a blank space where uh, you can drag and drop the, uh, all the icons. Like you can put in the media files, you can put in text, you can put in graphics, YouTube or video, or also animation into the uh, space. At Modo, this is a learning management system. Okay, so this is a kind of uh, a combination of uh, Facebook and uh, Moodle. Okay, so I like this uh, at Modo very much. It is a learning social learning network. Okay, that can secure microblogging platform where teachers and students can interact and collaborate online. So it has an interface that is similar like what I said just now. It's a Facebook and Moodle. However, it's much more secure since it's a closed network. And both teachers and students can share the notes, link, uh, links, files and resources with each other. In addition to this, teachers uh, ha can have the ability to post alerts, assignments, uh, grades, reminders, conduct a poll and share events. Students have also the uh, ability to participate in online discussions on the message board, uh, submit homework, view their grades and communicate with their teacher. So, and uh, using this app model is also, uh, the transmission is fast and it's safe paper. Why would I want to use Admodo? Because uh, I've, uh, it is a built an online learning conversation with your class about your subject. Admodo makes the learning easier by providing a simple ways to share files and communicate online. And then it encourages a peer learning and peer support environment both in the classroom and online. And I found that the students enjoy using Edmodo very much. So Edmodo security features, uh, it's not like Facebook, but it's some sort like Facebook. Okay? So Edmodo explicitly deals with school and teachers' concern about social networking for students. Uh, like each Edmodo class group is managed and controlled by the teacher. So it can be, you can log in as teacher and the students will log in as uh, students. Okay? Students need an access code to join in the class. If a student shares the code outside the class, the teacher can change it without affecting the students already joined in the group. Okay? So if you, the teacher changes the code, then the students cannot come in anymore. Okay? So students can only communicate to the whole class or to the teacher. Private messages between students are not possible. Okay? So anonymous uh, posting also is not possible because you cannot post any uh, weird uh, postings in this 
platform. Okay, and the teacher can also delete the post. The schools can audit the teacher and the students' activity. They can see and parental access to the children's post to the teacher is also an optional feature. So the parents can also come in and look into the uh, children's uh, what they are doing into the post. So let's watch the video of how to create an ad modo. This is going to be a quick tutorial on how to use Edmodo, how to sign up as a teacher. So first you'll go to the website and click I am a teacher. Select your title, put your name. I'm just making up a name here. Include your email address and of course a password agree to the terms and sign up. There's no email verification required to get you started but later on you will get an email that you'll have to click on. So here you have the option to add your school or your community that you're working out of which is great. I chose our uh, Whitcomb school just to kind of get things going. If you want to add a profile picture which I suggest um, you can do that You'll have to forgive the hundreds of pictures I have on my computer. I do photography on the side. So anyways, you find the picture that you like and just you can either click it once and select choose or just double click it and it should load up there for you. You can personalize your URL to, to make it easier to have people find you on Edmodo. I just use my first and well my fake first and last name. Um, you can do that, or you can use your own ideas, maybe your class name or something like that. Here are different communities. Um, you, I think that ESL is under world language or language. Um, I can't remember off the top of my head, but you can play around there. Maybe you're a content teacher, so you can click on your content area. So once you log in, you've got your picture, you've connected to your school. You can get a group going, you know, a group is like a class. Um, so I have, when I log in, I have six or seven classes that I have going on and uh, it just separates each class. So you give a name to your group or your class. Now you can either select your grade level or maybe you have a range of grade levels. So for example, I work at the high school, so I'm going to do grades 9 through 12. And uh, I was looking for ESL here. I think I clicked World Languages or Language Arts, and then there was ESL as the option. That's how it works, I remember. Now you can click on Advanced Options. I'm actually going to go back there in a minute. But uh, this is what uh, your class will look like. Um, right there, you can see that I have a group code as an invitation to that class. So that's the group code that you would share to get your students uh, to log in. One thing I really like to do um, back at Advanced Options is I like to click the Moderate All Posts and Replies. That just, that just gives me the option to view anything before a student posts it. Now, unlike Facebook, the students can't post on each other's pages, but they could post the whole class, so I just like to review that before they do. There's lots of different options here. You can send a notification, a post. Um, you can uh, manage your members there. You can create small groups. And that maybe is a little more advanced. Maybe I'll do another tutorial for that. But back to posts. Okay, so here I'm just showing you how to do a simple note. If I have a website that I want the students to look at, this is where I would do that. Um, I would, you know, say, hey, check out this website, or after you finish your quiz, click on the links below. You can just type in the website, or, of course, you can copy and paste. And right there is where you would put the name of your class, and it's already set up to send to my English language development class. It's as easy as that. It's pretty simple. Uh, the next thing I'm going to show you is how to do an alert. This is something that you might want to say, hey, quiz today, uh, quiz tomorrow, don't forget, study. It's just like a, a, a strong notification and they always come up bold and will also be in your notifications on the right side of the screen. 
Uh, an assignment. Okay, so this is great if you want to have students collaborate or just pass in their work. Um, so Edmodo paper here I'm writing. Um, I'm telling them their assignment. And then I'll select a due date, maybe a week. And if you have any attachments, uh, any pictures, any links, or any files, or any rubrics, you can just attach it right under that, and they will have everything that they need. I'm going to skip quizzes for a second and go right to polls. I like the poll feature. Um, it's just a good way to get some you know, quick feedback from the students. It's pretty easy to set up. And then again, you just send it to the class that you want. They like taking polls. I don't know what it is, but they like like the instant gratification of sharing their opinion. So on the top right, you see notifications. If a student's passed in any work, you'll see a notification there. So now we're going to go over to the library. I'm going to just show you how to upload documents. Just like you would upload something on Facebook. You click upload, you find the document, the picture, whatever it is that you want to share on this website or that you want to save. Um, I think here I wanted to just um, share a picture of my cute, adorable puppy, Little Miss Panda. Um, so you just hit OK and it'll upload it to your library. Now for the students it's called their, um, their backpack. So for teachers it's called a library. And for students, it's called a backpack. Um, you can create folders so that you can organize all of your work. So you just click New, give a folder name. Maybe you want to do pictures. So now we're going over to... I'm just sending a picture. So if I want to share a picture with my students, I can do that that way and connect it from the library instead of uploading new documents. All right, so here's the quiz feature. I really like this feature. It's not just for quizzes, but I do it for assignments, um, getting their feedback, journal entries. Um, you can give it a time limit. So if it's a block period, maybe you want to change that to 90 minutes. And there's lots of different um, types of questions that you can do. And the students like it because they get the instant gratification of getting back your response. Um, so here we did a true or false. My puppy is cute. You can select, uh, you can attach a picture or not. Um, you can just do any type of true or false. Here's a multiple choice question. I really like this one too. Um, it's great. Uh, I know in my biology class I'll do uh, a lot of multiple choice questions because that's what's on the MCAS. So I'll kind of copy some of those same prompts right here so that they can practice it at home. And it's easy to select the correct answer, set the correct answer. Short answers I like. I use this for um, writing prompts where I want to hear their opinions. Again, I'm attaching pictures to all of these, but you don't have to. You can just say, you know, how was your weekend and, and let them write about it. Uh, fill in the blanks is great. Um, it's not case sensitive, but it is spelling sensitive. So if a student were to write or were to spell my name wrong here, they wouldn't get credit. So you'd have to go back in and and give them credit. So it's a little bit of a pain, but if you want to test them on spelling, it's a great way to do that. And then finally, there's a matching section. Um, I'm not really going to get into doing all of that, but basically, you know, you can give directions here, match the correct answers uh, or the correct definitions with the vocabulary words. I have found that it's a little tricky for the students to do. There's something about the click and drag um, process that doesn't seem to work too well. So let me just delete that. So click assign quiz, give it a due date, maybe you want it to be on the same day or the next day, add to grade book, and send it to your students. They really seem to like this and get into doing it. Um, 
yeah, I found it to be really effective. Um, now, right now, you can see you can set up a calendar. So even the two little assignments that I put in are already marked on my calendar. And it will go on their calendar as well so that they can kind of plan ahead. Also, progress. This is where you would see like your grade book. Now, of course, I don't have any students right now, so I'm not going to see any of that. Uh, but that's where it would be. And again, the library that looks like a bunch of books. And I've got a new alert. So that's that alert that I said, hey, quiz tomorrow. Um, and you can hide those alerts from notifications. And that's it. There's a lot more to learn, but that should get you started. Okay, so now let's look at the examples of my Edmodo that I use in the class. This is the platform that I use and I'm the teacher. And I uh, post questions to them. I also embed uh, some PowerPoint slides or some uh, results. I make announcements and the students can interact and give some reflections and also uh, some views. Okay, So this is how uh, this, this platform is so user friendly to all the students. So that's all for today. I would like to uh, say that it is a very good, uh, useful Web 2.0 tools that I've explained to you all. So I've explained about uh, Padlet, that is a virtual uh, wall that you can introduce, you can do for introduction in the class. And then I use, uh, I explained to you all about Poll Everywhere, when you can do live uh, polling. Okay, you can see live polling in the class. And then you can use um, Prezi, that is uh, you can zoom in and zoom out, you can do uh, beautiful presentations for your class. And then you can use uh, Edmodo, that is the uh, learning management system that is a combination between uh, Moodle and Facebook. And I also explained to you all about Blank Space, where this is a new uh, technology for flipping a classroom. So thank you, see you again, bye bye.